Okay, I'm just waiting for Council Audio to let me know if we're good to go. Andrew, just the audio is being broadcast for the meeting, not video, correct? That's correct. Audio only. Okay, so folks don't want to have their camera on, that's okay. It's a good protocol for us to have our cameras on to communicate with each other, but um, only an audio recording will be recorded. So. Okay. Ed? Great. We are now live. Perfect. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Andrew Suh from the City Clerk's Office. This meeting office. is being recorded. This is the Los Angeles United School District Board of Education Compensation Review Committee. I will now take roll. If you hear your name, please just let me know by saying that you're here. Jamie Woods Gray. Here. Efren Martinez. Here. Leon Rayblatt. Here. Jared Rivera. Here. Wendy Ruiz. Here. Ali Saleh. Here. Carmel Sella. Here. Perfect. Seven members and a quorum. Uh, we're going to begin today with uh, the public comment, and we'll be taking multiple item comment first. Uh, members of the public will be afforded two minutes per item with up to four minutes total for this public comment period. So I'll read the call-in instructions just in case people don't have it. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 1-608-104238 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. All right, so we will take our first caller. Caller with the last three digits, 403. Please state your name and which items you'd like to speak on. Good puppet. Famous food critic. All items and general public comment. You have four minutes total. There is no general public comment as this is a special meeting. You may be well, Look at these cheaters, and I hope the students are listening to this right now. <laughs> this human will not take public comment, even though on a special, the committee can. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> so, I am the founder of this committee, <laughs> and I invented this committee the last time when these poor little LAUSD board members we're making a lousy part-time salary. <laughs> and I decided, well, everybody else is stealing, and everybody else is not going to jail. Why shouldn't these nice panel members get the same fucking money that these no-good city council sleazeballs get? <laughs> and at first I was fought, but I won. And now the compensation has been increased dramatically. <laughs> and I've had a chance to review this decision I made, and I decided that some of these board members are being underpaid, <laughs> and some of these board members are being overpaid. <laughs> and therefore, Go Puppet wants the following. Jackie Goldberg shall receive a salary of $350,000 a year because she's the only one with any ounce of integrity left. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. And then we have Melvin. Melvin the Mouse, who does nothing but try to run for other offices. He should get 10000 a year, because he's rich anyway. <laughs> so you see, we have to adjust compensation according to need and equity. <laughs> Uh, what about the one in the 6th district? Oh, you mean the pretty lady? She should also get $300,000 a year, too. <laughs> and the rest of them should stay at the current salary. 
But Melvin, he's doing a lousy fucking job. <laughs> and he needs to go run for Congress while he gets his 10000 <laughs> And then we have the second problem, part-time work. Should you be able to have a part-time job while you sit on the LAUSD? <laughs> of course you should. <laughs> it's a good thing. Fill your pockets with as much money as you can. That's according to the book by Jose Weizar. Better governance by Jose Luis Weizar. Available on paperback. <laughs> After he sent it, of course. <laughs> and then, of course, we're going to have these puppet commissioners. Look at this list. Has anybody heard of these people? At least last time we had some celebrities. <laughs> Why don't we do this? Let's put those people that were the, what's it called? Uh, the Los Angeles uh, City Council Redistricting Commission. Yes, thank you. Let's have all of them adjudicate this case. They did such a good job last time. Drawing our lines, didn't they? Yes, they sure did. Until the city council went and vetoed the whole thing. Hopefully this time, the city council will stay the fuck out of the way and let these commissions do their work. Unless they're being paid off. <laughs> and then we have the way that you're doing this meeting. Bill Puppet tried to log into Zoom. Bill Puppet pressed his code. one six zero eight one zero four two three eight. And then you know what happened there, Mr. Chair? It asked me for a... You're muted, Andrew. It asked me for a password. I want Thank you for your comments. Your time has expired. And we don't have any other callers on the queue, so public comment is now closed. We'll move on to item number one. Item number one, determination relative to teleconference meetings pursuant to AB 361. Um, determination in accordance with AB 361, Section 3E1B, whether meeting in person would present imminent risks to the health or safety of attendees because of the continuing state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic as originally proclaimed by, by the governor on March 4, 2020. Okay, so um, we do have a motion here. Um, I don't know if you want to just very briefly explain what this is, Harit. Um, yeah, sure. So um, under the um, governor's executive order and AB 361, a state law, it allows uh, Brown Act bodies like this one to meet virtually um, during the course of the pandemic. That time is ending soon, but in order to authorize this meeting to occur virtually uh, over Zoom, we would need to pass uh, a motion that uh, Andrew will read into the record, and we need a first and a second for the motion to allow for this meeting to be held um, in this format. We, at, later on in the agenda, we'll be discussing how we want to hold and when we want to hold future meetings. Um, this authorization would allow some future meetings to be held virtually as well, but um, that would only be for a temporary time period. So that's something we can discuss later. But this motion and item is to authorize this meeting to be conducted um, in this matter. All right. Um, so I'll move. I'm, I'll read the motion into the record. I move that the committee determine in accordance with AB 361, Section 3E1B, that meeting in person would present imminent risks to the health or safety of attendees because of the continuing state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, can I get a mover, please? I moved. Move approval. Great. So Commissioner Rabat moves. Um, can second. I get a second? Commissioner Martinez seconds. And we will we need to take a vote on this, right? Yes. So for all um, action items, when we meet telephonically or in this um, in this setting, um, all the votes have to be by roll call. So Andrew will read the roll, and please state your vote as aye or no. Right. Commissioner Gray. Am I aye? Commissioner Martinez. Aye. Commissioner Rayblatt. Aye. Commissioner Rivera. Aye. Commissioner Ruiz. Aye. 
Commissioner Sella? Aye. Commissioner Sella? Aye. Seven ayes, and this motion is approved. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, we will go on to item number two. Presentation by the Chief Legislative Analyst and City Attorney relative to the committee, committee purpose and intent pursuant to the Los Angeles City Charter Section 804 and Historical Committee information. Thank you, Andrew and Commissioners. Um, welcome. I'm going to go first and then Andrea is going to go next to give you a little bit of background about this commission um, and its uh, responsibilities under the Charter. We promise to be brief, um, but we are looking forward to working with you um, over the next several weeks as you do your as you do your work. My name is Harith Trevetti. I'm with the City Attorney's Office, and I'll be staffing this committee on behalf of my office. Um, along me and along uh, uh, the ride with us uh, will be Karen Kofian and Andrea Galvin from the CLA's office. Andrew Sa, you already know from the clerk's office. We also have some personnel from the CAO and personnel department who may be able to assist along the way. And uh, Michael McLean, uh, you'll be meeting later today from the LAUSD, um, is here to provide some important um, background and context from his perspective. Um, Again, we'd like to start with a few minutes about the purpose and background and basic responsibilities of the committee. Much of this you may already know, but I'd like to discuss it briefly here in this setting for the benefit of all members and for the public uh, and for the record. Um, first, I'll start with the background of uh, the charter provision that establishes this committee and guides this committee's work. And then the CLA, um, Andrea will discuss some of the committee's previous resolutions and, um, and actions in 2007 and 2012 and 2017, setting the compensation of LAUSD board members pursuant to this charter provision. A little background, and I'm a lawyer, so we're going to have to start with uh, the state constitution for just a minute. Um, the California constitution, um, under, under the California constitution, certain aspects of the LAUSD board of education are governed by the LA city charter. For example, the LA City Charter governs the manner in which board members are elected. Uh, it can also set and governs the term um, for which they're elected and for their compensation. This is in Article 9, Section 16A of the State Constitution. We often get questions as to why LAUSD matters are governed under the Charter. It is this uh, state constitutional provision that provides that is the case. And all elements of our Charter that govern LAUSD have been approved by not just the city voters, but the entire electorate of LAUSD pursuant to this constitutional provision. Part of the constitutional uh, authority under the charter, as I mentioned, is setting uh, the, the compensation of LAUSD board members. And pursuant to that authority, in March of 2007, the voters of the school district approved Measure L. Measure L, a copy of which is in your packet, accomplished three important reforms for the LAUSD. First, it set term limits for board members. Second, it established campaign finance regulations for the board elections. And third, it created this compensation committee to review and set salaries of LAUSD board members every five years. Measure L followed a period of intense study regarding LAUSD and its relationship to the city and its governance. And one of the findings and recommendations of the President's Joint Commission on LAUSD Governance was the recognition that the workload of LAUSD board members uh, was significant and the compensation should be adjusted according to that workload and periodically reviewed by this committee. Uh, when Measure L was passed, uh, state law um, was a little different than it is now. But since then, state law has been recently um, amended in the Education Code um, to specifically provide that a school district of LAUSD size can have the compensation of its board members set by a compensation committee created under a city charter. Previously, the State Education Code set the compensation for all board members at $2,000 per month. Now the uh, State Education Code expressly provides that the compensation for board members can be set by a committee established under a charter like ours um, and through a compensation review committee process. So the provision that was adopted by Measure L that's most important here is Section 804 of the City Charter, a copy of which is also uh, been provided to you and in your packet um, and available on the city's website. Measure or Section 804 provides that a few things. First, that the Compensation Committee will convene every five years to review and set salaries and benefits for LAUSD board members. It also establishes the criteria, importantly, that the committee should take into account when setting the compensation. 
uh, when establishing salary and benefits, that criteria, those criteria include considering the amount of time board members serve uh, directly or indirectly related to the performance of their official duties, the amount of salary and benefits received by other elected and appointed officers and officials in the state with comparable responsibilities, the amount of salary and benefits received by judiciary, members of the judiciary, and the amount of salary and benefits received by the private educational sectors. Recognizing, however, that public officers do not receive and do not expect to receive compensation at the same level as the private sector. Section 804 provides that after considering the above factors, this committee shall adopt a resolution by a majority vote, setting the salary and the benefits for LAUSD board members. That resolution will be effective 60 days after it's set. The committee makes the final decision here. It's not reviewable by the Board of Education or by the City Council. The Section 804 also sets a deadline, a timeline for your work. Um, you must complete your work within 90 days of the Council's confirmation of all board or committee members. And so here that deadline is April 17th. So you have to complete your work by April 17th. Um, finally, uh, Section 804 also provides after you've set your sal the salaries and completed your work that the Board of Education can increase the salary and benefits annually in the years that the committee does not meet by a maximum of 2%. So annually, they can increase the, the compensation by 2% until the committee meets again in five years. So that provides a short background and summary of the law that's before you and that guides your work. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Andrea now, who will discuss a little bit of, more about the history of this committee, what, what it's done in the past in terms of setting compensation, uh, to provide you some context, uh, historical context, for um, working forward on that issue now. So, Andrea. We can't hear you for some reason. Yeah. No, we cannot. Well, Andre is trying to um, get her audio in order. If anyone has any questions on the the uh, parts that I discussed, I'd be happy to answer them. Some of this will come up, up again and again throughout uh, your work over the next few weeks, so I'll be here with you to answer questions as we go forward, but if there are any questions in the meantime, I'm happy to, to respond to them here now. You can't hear me? Oh, now we, we can, can hear you. Okay, yay, okay, good. Okay, so, um, I'm just going to give you a brief history of what the committee has done before, and um, we'll go over what the resolution will contain once um, some decisions have been made. This is the fourth time the committee has convened. The first time was in 2007, following the passage of Measure L, and then um, the committee also met in 2012, 2017, and now here we are again in 2023. Um, in 2007, the committee added two options for compensation. If a board member was engaged in outside employment, there was a lower rate established based on um, state law. Um, if the board member did not have outside employment, um, d um, there was a higher rate based on a teacher's salary at that time. Benefits were also set as the same as those who were employed by the district. In 2012, the committee made no changes to compensation or benefits, so everything stayed the same. Uh, five year or six years ago now in 2017, uh, the committee had, the committee changed the amount per category. So with outside employment, the um, compensation level was raised to fifty thousand dollars per year. No outside employment, it was raised to one hundred and twenty five thousand um, dollars. Now before you, um, the committee has the option to keep the same compensation level and benefits or to make changes as the committee deems necessary. Once the committee determines if and how changes should be made, a new resolution will be prepared for adoption by the committee. This will establish the annual salary and also medical, dental, insurance, and other benefits. The resolution that will be approved will contain the background information, the dates of the meetings that we've held, the work that was completed by the committee. It also contains specific findings that need to be made along with, along with the changes, if any, have been decided on. The resolution um, 
is then transmitted to council for the record, but no council action is required. And um, 60 days after the adoption of the resolution, the committee is dissolved. So in a nutshell, that's what the committee is tasked with. That's, been, that's what has been previously done. Um, what you decide, the information you'd like to bring forward, the meetings you'd like to hold, um, that is up to all of you as a committee. So that's basically it briefly. I have a question. Do, do the uh, salaries include the health benefits? Is that separate? I don't know the answer to that. Harit, do you have? Do you happen to remember? I, I can uh, pop in if you want, and the answer is no. It's the salary plus the benefits is separate, and it's the same benefit package that all LAUSD employees receive. Oh, okay, great. Andrea, uh, Carmel Sella, um, another question. In the past, has the committee invited outside speakers to provide testimony or anything to help inform the work of the committee? I believe they have. I don't have specifics as to who or what organizations came, but I believe, um, I believe they have. Thank you. Would it be possible to find out? <clears throat> Definitely. If, if anyone has that information here, that would be great. But if not, we could definitely find out and send you all the information. Thank I you, Commissioner Efren. Is, you were here last in 2017, right? And I can also speak to it, but I'll, I'll defer to you to take this right now. Thank you. Uh, yes, we did have uh, outside individuals come. We had a plethora of, of questions. We had experts on on a whole bunch of things. So please don't limit. Uh, yourselves on what you want to hear, uh, as far as who you want to hear, I should say, uh, from. Uh, you know, I personally um, was the one that made the motion the last time to increase it to what it is now. Uh, after we we all collectively, you know, put our minds together and asked a million and one questions, and we we basically started comparing uh, what other elected uh based on similar constituency uh numbers and and everything from the state level from uh state senators to uh assembly to all the way down and that's how we kind of uh figured it out so uh one thing that i did have a question on and one thing that they did not want to uh, i think we were very short on the last time uh that i brought up many times uh was retirement these folks don't get any retirement. So the more, if it's a teacher and they move into this particular position and get elected, uh, they they don't lose their retirement, their retirement, but it goes on hold. So they get they don't continue accumulating or anything or have no retirement whatsoever. So that is something that I hope that we are able to further discuss this time around. Uh, and maybe have a, a really good dialogue about. Hopefully I answered your question, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you so much. That, that really provides really helpful guidance. Thank you. I'll also add that, um, and I have extended this invitation to different members of our board in the past, um, both prior board members who are no longer serving and current board members um, have come to the commission and have had a free-flowing um, question and answer period after they give a little bit of insight into their duties and responsibilities as an actual board member. So that's some, you know, good primary uh, evidence that you may wish to hear. And we'll, I'll, I'll cover that in a little bit once we get through um, this part of the agenda. Uh, so have you invited the labor union uh, people to this meeting also? I have not. I don't have any, I don't there are have two any. people that there are two people who were on previous committees, right? Ephraim and I, I believe I was the I'm, I'm the only one that was uh, from a previous one. I was the vice chair. Oh, you were on the previous. Oh, you were the only one. I thought it was two people. Okay, 
So I was just curious as to whether you'd invite the labor partners to the meeting. You know, uh, I don't believe they they came, but we did have a lot of the previous board members, such as Mr. McKenna. Uh, we had, uh, gosh, I, I, I want to say we had probably about like six or seven previous members come. Uh, but I think you bring up a very good uh, uh, point. I don't think we, not that I remember that we had anyone really from the union itself. Our parent groups. Did we, we have parent we, groups? We did have members from the community and, and parent, uh, call it clusters, that organizations from within LAUSD that did come out and, and uh, gave us their perspective as well. Okay. So we, we can kind of go out there and invite folks uh, to come, and staff was always very kind to, to uh, accommodate uh, for anything that we, we pretty much asked. I won't get in the habit of doing this, but I'll also add after having listened to all the prior meetings that I had access to, the public comment periods, I believe, were publicized to a, a little greater degree so that there were public comments from uh, community members representing all kinds of um, points, points of view, which is also another helpful avenue for the commission, I believe. Any other questions, members? Great. Seeing none, um, we'll move on to item number three. Presentation by the city attorney relative to California open government laws, the Ralph M. Brown Act, California Public Records Act, and conflict of interest. I'm going to give a very short um, rehash of the Brown Act and Public Records Act that apply to this committee. Many of you have served on uh, public boards before, uh, familiar faces here, so I know you're, this is routine information for you. Uh, we provided uh, more details in um, briefing papers and, and a packet that you should have that provides additional reference material regarding these rules. Um, and then I have uh, Renee Stottle here from the city attorney's office who will speak briefly about conflict of interest and ethics rules that apply to this commission. Um, the Brown Act, likely familiar to all of you, Brown Act is a state law that governs open meetings, requires open meetings for local government bodies, including this committee. Um, in short, the Brown Act requires that all meetings of this committee be conducted in a properly noticed, agendized manner and allow opportunity for public comment. Um, the most important factor for you all to consider is what constitutes a meeting. A meeting is a meeting of a quorum of this committee. We have a seven-member committee here, so four members are a quorum. If four of you get together to discuss the business of this committee, that discussion has to occur in a public setting after having been properly agendized and noticed. You may find yourself in situations where you want to reach out to one committee member or another committee member regarding a matter before this committee. The Brown Act is, um, in, in fact, when four members of this committee uh, reach collective concurrence or discuss a matter that's before this committee. We would urge you to be very careful about your communications with each other so that you don't inadvertently um, in, in, engage in a conversation or communication that it um, includes four members of this committee. So it could happen in multiple ways inadvertently by yourself. You may contact one person. For example, if that person contacts another on this committee and then another, then you have four members in a serial conversation that would, um, would implicate the Brown Act and it cannot occur without a Brown Act setting. Alternatively, you may find yourself briefing one person or talking to one of the committee members about a matter and then later talking to another committee member separately about a matter and then a third committee member about the matter. That's the hub and scope, hub, hub and spoke um, type of communication chain, which also, since four committee members will have been involved in a communication there, could um, would implicate the Brown Act. So again, if you have questions, if you have any other matters you'd like to discuss, do them in this public setting when the committee is meeting and during a meeting. If you would like to um, talk to staff, you can talk to Andrew or myself or Andrea if you, for example, want to report back on something or, or raise something for a future meeting, and let us um, make sure that matter is agendized properly and discussed properly before everyone. Informal social gatherings, if you're at an informal social gathering and you find three other members of this committee there, 
that doesn't constitute a meeting as long as you don't discuss matters that are before this committee, the compensation of LAUSD board members. Um, also, social media, if you happen to use social media, um, the, the Brown Act now requires or prohibits um, communications through social media, including liking or responding to posts that another committee member has made regarding matters before this committee. So if a committee member here makes a post on social media regarding a matter before this committee, please do not respond to that post or even like or dislike or make any reaction to that post. Um, even if only one person makes a reaction to it, that's something that the Brown Act prohibits now. It's not just a collective amount of uh, four of you. So just refrain from social media postings and respondings about this work of this committee during this short life. Again, additional material about the Brown Act is provided in your um, to you, and then we're here to answer any questions you may have. Our goal here is to guide these meetings to make sure they're done in a Brown Act compliant way, but also in a way that is effective for you to get your business done. Second is the Public Records Act. Um, as veterans of public work and public committee work, you are aware of this law as well. The um, communications and records that you have uh, that pertain to the work you do for this public body are public records and are subject to uh, production if we have a public records request. So just keep all your documents and if we do get a public records request, we will reach out to you. Um, and if you receive a public records request for some reason independent of it coming to Andrew or Andrea or our office, uh, please contact us right away so we can coordinate a response. Public records requests and the, uh, the Public Records Act also imply, apply to not just communications you do formally with this committee, but if you're using outside email or other communication devices and you're communicating with folks about the work of this committee, even if it's a private email address or private device, that is subject to a production under the public records request. Now, um, I know you don't have official city of Los Angeles email addresses. I don't believe you do in this committee. So what we suggest is appropriate protocol or a good protocol is to set up a separate email account. Um, for example, Commissioner Sella at, at gmail.com. And all of the work of this commission um, communicates through that, that email account. And so if we ever happen to have a production request, it's easy for you to, to look at that account and see these are my communications and you don't have to go through your private account. Um, so use of private account is, is discouraged. Try to set up a separate account so that you are able to segregate that information and um, have it available if necessary. That's it for me on these two laws, the Brown Act and the Public Records Act. Contact me anytime um, if you have any questions and I'm happy to answer them. And I will um, now turn it over to Renee, who will talk briefly about the ethics and conflicts rules applicable to you. Good evening, commissioners. I uh, hope, uh, hope you're enjoying yourself so far. I am going to talk very briefly about conflicts of interest in ethics and just as a, uh, a reminder, um, as, as city commissioners, you are subject to both city and state uh, conflict and ethics roles during the tenure, uh, your 90-day ten, your tenure. Um, and so one, one of those things that you probably already know about is that you have to file a Form 700 Statement of Economic Interest with the Ethics Commission and the Form 60. If you haven't already done so, you should do so, because my understanding is the deadline was yesterday. Um, if you have questions about that, you should talk to the Ethics Commission about that. Um, if you have, a, if you, um, don't want to talk to them, uh, feel free to reach out to us, but we will probably send you back to the Ethics Commission. Um, because um, the Commission does not have its own what we call conflict of interest code, you will have to file um, your disclosure what we consider broadly, like elected officials in the city. Um, so um, um, if you have, so if you have questions about that, again, I would encourage you to talk to the Ethics Commission. Um, in terms of conflicts of interest, um, the conflicts of interest here in your world here should be pretty small um, in that the main conflict of interest here is whether you, you or your spouse or domestic partner have a financial tie to any of the board members on the LAUSD school board. If you do, um, I would encourage you to reach out to us so we can discuss whether it's really an issue or not. 
but that should be the primary and really only um, conflict of interest issue that you should have here because of your your um, jurisdiction. Um, a few other reminders as commissioners, um, some ethics rules that you might not realize apply to you during this tenure. Um, as a public official, you are subject to gift rules. And so during your tenure um, on this commission, you're not only subject to state gift limits um, from persons within your disclosure category, which is currently set at $590 per year, but the city has stricter rules uh, of a total ban on gifts from lobbyists and lobbying firms and a $100 limit from what we call restricted sources. And a restricted source for you are people who have matters pending before you. So during this 90-day tenure, um, you need to be very cautious about taking gifts from people who are interested in what you're doing. And if you have a question about it, feel free to ask us. Feel, to, feel free to ask. In addition to the gift restriction, um, if you would ordinarily, or if you're asked to, pay, uh, to speak and get uh, paid to do that, um, there's an honoraria restriction on you. And so um, I would, there are exceptions, but if you have a question or that issue comes up for, for you, please ask for advice. And again, we're only talking about during the time frame that you're serving on this commission. Um, two other topics I was going to briefly mention that sometimes people don't realize is the city has a restriction on city commissioners, which you are considered, um, um, a, a, a ban on attempting to influence city decisions or compensation while you were a commissioner. So if you would otherwise be um, lobbying, essentially, um, city, the city on matters, you won't be able to do that during your time on this commission. Um, and the other item I was going to mention is that um, as a city commissioner, we have restrictions on political fundraising. Uh, for commissioners, you cannot engage in fundraising for city, candid city candidates um, or elected officials. Um, so that's my general summary. Um, you should have received some documents and guides from the Ethics Commission. If you have any questions at all, feel free to uh, let her know, and um, if necessary, you know we'll talk together and. Um, I wish you good luck on your venture and duties and responsibilities. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Renee. Um, so since we are uh, you know, using teleconference, if you do have a question, uh, please feel free to use the raise hand feature. You can find that at the bottom of your Zoom screen. like we don't have any questions. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, we can move on to item number four on our agenda, introduction of members and election of officers. <clears throat> so um, we will go down the list from our agenda. So we'll start with Commissioner Gray, go down all the way to Commissioner Sella, and then if you can provide a brief introduction. Um, about yourself, and then after all of the commissioners provided their introductions, um, we'll move on to the election of officers. And for that, I'll speak more um, after all of the introductions. Okay, very good. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jimmy Woods Gray. That's Woods Gray hyphen. So usually it comes on the W, not G. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, the man who, the you know, the aren't you, the, the sheepy guy who spoke earlier, I don't know where he's been. Many of us know each other. So, therefore, we are a group of people that are known. 
I see fa- I see friends' faces on here, and I uh, look forward to working with everyone. I have been a commissioner for many years for, in different commissions uh, for different reasons, uh, different mayors, different places. But I think I'm on this commission because I also am an active member of the UTLA, and they were looking for someone. And I am an active member of UTLA, a life member, and just got reelected to the House of Representatives, which is a decision-making body of the union. Um, so that's one of the reasons I'm on this committee. But I have done a lot of community work over the years, uh, volunteer work, help people get elected. And I know all those rules about not, you know, how I'm not raising money. It's a very difficult thing not to do as a commissioner. And presently, I'm actually president of the fire commission. And uh, thought this was just going to be a committee. I mean, you know. <laughs> However, everything seems to be working fine. Um, and um, I don't know I, what else to tell you. I taught for 30, uh, 32, 36 years, and I'm retired. So that's my main job now is retirement. Thank you. I don't know if there's anything else to say. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to say, but it's not important to this committee. Thank you, Commissioner Woods Gray. I will make that change for the agenda moving forward. Uh, Commissioner Martinez. Thank you. Uh, my name is Zephyr Martinez, and as uh, Commissioner Woods Gray mentioned, it's, it's wonderful to see a lot of friendly faces. Uh, and uh, I'm just happy to be here once again uh on this commission uh i've been blessed to be here once again and i look forward to working with all of you thank you uh commissioner ray black hi good evening i um i work currently at the los angeles unified school district and uh for some reason, and then on the certificated side of the business uh, in the classification, compensation, and selection, um, I lead the unit um, that uh, provides um, analysis of compensation for our um, all certificated staff. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to providing input to this committee. And then it's a pleasure to meet everybody. And so I think it's my first time on a city council committee. So I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Commissioner Rivera. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jared Rivera. Uh, this is, I believe, my first um, commission that I've served on, so um, it's an honor to be here. Um, let's see, in my day job, I serve as political director for SEIU 2015, which is uh, the long-term care workers uh, union representing long-term care workers across the state of California. Um, I also uh, am the father of uh, two children. One of them um, is a second grader in an LAUSD uh, school, and um, we live in the Highland Park area. Uh, my younger son is not yet um, uh, in school. Um, and I also am the co-chair of the uh, Liberty Hill Foundation, which is another um, uh, passion project uh, that I have supporting community organizing around the city. So it's uh, great to be here with all of you. Thank you. Commissioner Ruiz. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Wendy Ruiz. I am a first generation American and a proud alumni of the Los Angeles Unified School District. I have advocated um, some time ago. Um, but for some of the programs that we actually get across the state of California uh, for out-of-school time for children, um, and I previously worked in the special education law field before I became a civil servant. Um, I consider myself a super volunteer because I do a little bit of everything, but um, I always say that I will never be something more important than a mother to my children. I have three girls who... Uh, one of them just graduated from LAUSD and is now at Mount St. Mary's, and I have two other little ones that are in elementary and in high school um, with LAUSD. So I am very honored to be a part of this group with you all. Thank you. Commissioner Saleh. Thank you, 
Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Ali Saleh. Uh, I am a council member in the city of Bell, uh, born and raised in the city of Bell, went through uh, LAUSD schools, uh, elementary all the way to high school. Um, I was chosen to serve on this board by Supervisor Hahn. Uh, I still have a child who's uh, uh, in high school and uh, also in LAUSD. So looking forward to working with all of you on this board and uh, Thank you for having me. Thank you. And lastly, Commissioner Sella. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's great to see some familiar faces, uh, both among the commissioners and the city staff. Uh, I'm Carmel Sella, and I am a local government relations director at Wells Fargo, and so I'm filling the slot for representative from a large employer. Um, and uh, I've been at Wells uh, quite a long, 17 years, uh, but prior to uh, joining Wells Fargo, I was uh, uh, worked at City Hall for many years as a deputy mayor in the Hahn administration and in the city attorney's office and in the council office, and very involved in the community. And as it relates to uh, LAUSD, I was on the board of LA's Best, which I really enjoyed, and now I'm on the board of LA Parks Foundation and the Pat Brown Institute. Um, and again, just really uh, look forward to working with everyone. Thank you so much, all of the commissioners. Um, so we will need to proceed with um, holding an election for the chair of the committee as well as the vice chair. And um, for that to happen, we can entertain a motion from the floor. So you can move to nominate uh, any of the commissioners as chair and then we'll need a second to that motion. And once that's confirmed, um, we'll ask around if there are any other motions. And if there are none, we will go on to voting. And as we've done before, we will um, vote orally. So I will call on each commissioner and you will provide an aye or a nay. And once that's done for the chair, we'll move on to the vice chair. So um, starting now, um, we can entertain any motions from the floor for the position of chair. Um, I would nominate Ephraim Martinez because he was vice chair last time. Perfect time now to assume the full responsibility. <laughs> I second that. Great. So we have a motion on the floor for Commissioner Martinez as chair and seconded by Commissioner Sella, was it? Yes. Perfect. And, and just to echo what Commissioner Woods Gray indicated, I, I think his experience um, will be really helpful to us and I think he's a, a natural choice to be chair. Great. Um, are there any other motions? Seeing none, we will now vote on the motion to appoint Commissioner Martinez to the position of chair for the committee and a roll call vote. Commissioner Woods Gray. Yes. Commissioner Martinez. Aye. Commissioner Ray Blatt. Aye. Commissioner Rivera. Aye. Commissioner Ruiz. Aye. Commissioner Sele. Aye. Commissioner Sella. Aye. Perfect. Congratulations, Commissioner Martinez. You are now the chair of this committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all of you for, for uh, uh, thinking and believing in me. <laughs> right. Uh, at this time, we will now entertain any motions for the position of vice chair. I'd like to make a motion uh, for Commissioner Woods Gray to serve as vice chair. I've known uh, Commissioner Woods Gray for many years and her service to the city and her current service as a fire commissioner and other roles that she's played. She's a coalition builder, she's a consensus builder, and I think she'd be a, a strong choice. Back in that motion. I, you know, I have so many responsibilities with the fire department until I really, I hate to decline, but it's something that I would have to decline. I'm sorry. <laughs> Completely understand. I, I would like, I would like to, refer, to uh, nominate uh, committee member Ali because he has the county 
he's coming from the county experience, and I think that would be a good match. I agree. And uh, so I will make a second to that motion. Not that I have enough on my plate as well, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, are there any other motions? Seeing none, we will now vote on the motion. Uh, Woods Gray Martinez to appoint Commissioner Saleh to the position of Vice Chair for the Committee. We will take a roll call vote. Commissioner Woods Gray? Aye. Commissioner Martinez? Aye. Commissioner Rayblatt? Aye. Commissioner Rivera? Aye. Commissioner Ruiz? Aye. Commissioner Sale? Aye. And Commissioner Sella? Aye. Seven ayes. And Commissioner Ali Sale is now the Vice Chair for this committee. Congratulations. Thank you all for the vote of confidence. Looking forward to working with all of you. Amazing. Okay. So we have now taken care of that, and we can move on to item number five. <clears throat> Discussion and presentation by Michael McLean, Executive Officer, LAUSD Board of Education, relative to board member responsibilities and time commitments and related matters. Good evening, everyone. Um, as I just said, my name is Michael McLean. I'm the Executive Officer of the Board of education. Um, maybe I could set some gravitas for who I am because I feel like I was sort of parachuted in here. I've been with the district for just four years, which makes me a relative newcomer to this space. Most folks um, have a ton of time in the district and have um, profound institutional knowledge, all of which I am learning rapidly. Uh, prior to being the executive officer of the board, I worked in the office of general counsel as a, as a litigator uh, defending the district against um, you know, plaintiff side lawsuits against the district. Um, and so my job now as the executive officer of the board is uh, every single administrative task that flows to and from the board uh, comes through my office. So um, we see everything. Um, I have seven bosses, all of whom are uh, elected officials, who you know as school board members. Um, there are three direct reports. Uh, to the school board. I'm one of them. The superintendent is the other, and the office of uh, the inspector general is, is the third. Um, I'm not on the same level as all those folks, but it gives you an idea of, um, I guess, our organizational structure. Um, before I, I don't have a big spiel. I actually didn't send out uh, materials on purpose because I know that six of the seven of you are new, and I wanted to find out uh, how to tailor uh, the materials that you might want. Um, I listened to all the prior committee meetings that I could, obviously audio only, and I noted that uh, my predecessor, who had been in this job for 26 years, uh, made uh, presentations and answered questions at each committee. I think he was either invited uh, the first time and then, and then he came back for others because the, the questions, as time went on, became more specific, as, as they naturally would. Uh, connected to that, I would um, recommend to you, if you have not already, Go back to at least the city council file for 2017, June, to this committee, and um, give the four uh, committees a listen. Um, I know that's a lot of time. That's about five hours total, I think. But it will give you a tremendous perspective and history and context at a detail that I am unable to provide for you right now. Um, and that will uh, certainly help you make your decision on whatever you choose to do moving forward. Um, LA Unified is a gigantic school district, the second largest in the nation. Um, we have uh, over half a million kids, uh, including adults, uh, who, who we educate. Um, we are one of the largest employers um, in California, uh, so we're behind the county, LA County, obviously. Uh, the seven districts these each have, I believe, about 600, a population of about 600,000, so each of the seven has about 600,000 constituents, um, serving about 4.8 million people. Uh, so it goes without saying, though I just did, that the work of the board encompasses and touches the lives of nearly 5 million people. So that's not, not just our students, um, but also their parents, and also those who um, are not anything to do with school districts, uh, because we employ folks, and we uh, the school board 
because they make a decision about every policy that goes into effect, everything comes across their desk to read, um, the lives of the workers are heavily impacted by the decisions and the time and the commitments of the school board. Um, so uh, their jobs are very serious. Um, I know that there was a time when the school board uh, was, uh, we, we covered the history a little bit today, was paid uh, about 24,000, 25,000 for part-time and about 48,000 around there um, if they chose to do the work full-time in 2017. That changed um, and it's now $125,000 a year. I have been in this position for almost a year now and in that time I have um, been able to work very closely with and develop pretty good relationships with the board members and um, their, their job commitments and their time spent doing the necessary work of what a board member does looks to me way beyond 40 hours a week. In fact, it doesn't look like they're ever off the clock, so to speak. Um, that doesn't mean they're working every minute of the day, but every minute of the day they are subject to answer questions or be approached or have to in some way uh, address, address the needs of their job. So what, what is their job? Um, every check, every expenditure, every budget um, has to be has to flow through the board. In order to do that, we have uh, board meetings every month. Um, there's been a trend. I, uh, looking backward about 10 years, there used to be um, uh, a lot of board meetings that I think, um, I'm not sure exactly why there were so many. Uh, and then the trend has been fewer board meetings as time has gone on and it looks like uh, the process has become more efficient. Um, each board book that the board member has to review contains, let's say, a board report that is discussing um, something that the board is being asked to act upon, uh, to basically say yes or no to. That could be um, budget. That could be something about a policy having to do with, um, let's say, installing solar panels, facilities, procurement, everything under the sun. Uh, there will be a board report, and then there will be an informative, and then there will be uh, attachments. I know I'm getting a little bit of detail here, but any given board report or board book for a board meeting can have up to like 500 to 1,000 pages. In it. And I am a cynic. And when I first came on to this job, I definitely believed that there was not a single board member who would read every single page. I have found that that's not true. They all take their jobs very, very seriously. And I haven't yet run into a board member who doesn't read every single page. Um, and I find that to be quite impressive. So the work that goes into just reviewing the material that needs to go to one of our board meetings is tremendous. Um, and one of the things my office does is we try and get that material to them as early as possible before the board meeting so they can actually review that. Obviously, this doesn't even take into account um, board members are elected officials. And as elected officials with uh, defined geographic boundaries, and 100 to sometimes 200 schools within each boundary, they do school visits and they do site visits and they meet with labor partners and they meet with constituents and parents um, all the time, uh, in addition to what, whatever they have to do to prepare for a board meeting. So um, their duties and activities are uh, massive. Uh, obviously, they don't do it all on their own. They have staff and they become experts at delegation. Um, that is the the, the shortest version of what I can say uh, a board member does. Um, and, you know, looking at the work of this committee, so a part of my job is also managing all of the board meetings. So that's all the Brown Act compliance, that's all the, the stuff we heard at the outset of this, this meeting, and along with that comes public comment. And I think it's important to, um, I guess, be magnanimous when we're listening to the public comment uh, period, because they, we'll hear over and over again, both at our board meetings and even at this commission meeting, that there is some sort of dastardly boondoggle occurring um, where some cabal is hoping to pay these, these folks an absolute ton of money. I believe it is the work of this commission to sort of set a salary that will attract the very best people to lead the school district. And I believe that's why that they actually gave um, a salary in, in 2017. Um, so your work is, is very, very important. Um, some other contacts. Uh, so looking at the list of the largest school districts in the state, if you take the top 10, LUSD is number one and is larger than the following eight school districts below it. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of how 
it's a massive, massive entity. In uh, the the budget is the operational budget is about thirteen billion dollars, and every one of those dollars is expected to be um, handled with care, because the seven members who decide how that money is going to get spent are stewards of these massive public funds, uh, and they're account held to account by by the public. Uh, so that's an extra aspect to their job that is difficult to quantify. Now, it's obviously they volunteer for the position, right, by throwing themselves into the electoral ring and, and, and going for it. Um, but the, the, the importance of their job is, is, is hard to overstate. Um, and it's, it's hard for me to believe that it, was con it could be considered a part-time job um, at, at any point. I, I was an L.A. USD kid um, in the 80s. Wow. Uh, when enrollment exploded, there were 700,000 students in the uh, LAUSD at that time. Um, and there weren't even enough places to put us all. And even at that time, board members were dealing with uh, tremendous issues. Um, so that's the scope of it. I, 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 I'm sure to answer as many questions as you may have. Some of your, some of your uh, questions I will not have answers to. Um, but I will bring you answers to anything that you have that is within my ability to to put to put together. Um, I think that's about it. Do we have questions, or do we, do you have areas of inquiry that I could expound on for you now that maybe will cover a bunch of questions? Oh, and I did. Um, so touching on, I'm sorry, touching on a few things that questions that came up earlier. Um, the school board is comprised of, uh, right now, a couple of retirees. Uh, we have a couple of uh, new moms who, ju who just had kids um, all, and a couple of teachers. Everyone on the board has teaching experience, which is fantastic. Um, and the way that the salary system is set up now uh, is able to attract people who otherwise would not be able to do it. So if you have, um, I'm going to say younger, but when I say younger, I mean someone between like 30 and 50 who, who might be very well qualified for the school board um, and prior years would be unable to run. And these, these are this input I've gotten from the board members asking them, hey, why did you run? What, what's your story? Um, and I, I heard that a couple of times. I also want to say that um, I've spoken with a couple of the board members and they're happy to come in and answer your questions um, in this committee format if, if you like. Uh, and that's all I have of my, you know, extemporaneous, uh, put some context to it. Um, this is all new to me, too, so I'm a learner along with you if you haven't been on the committee before. And um, let's do it. Uh, Mr. Rivera, Commissioner Rivera, I see a question. Yeah, an, an item that would be helpful for me as we move along is I, I don't know if we anticipate a, uh, a review, a salary re review of comparable districts from around the country. So, you know, I... Uh, New York, Boston, some of the other larger districts to get a, a sense if we could compare uh, what other large districts have done with um, their board members would be helpful. Okay. Any other questions, members? We can also um, discuss uh, you know, questions and things you would like to see um, at a future agenda in the next item as well. So, yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, I guess, yes, just for to kind of uh, speed, speed it up a bit, um, I, I was hoping that we can, uh, that staff could look into uh, the, the retirement part uh, as well. I know that that'll take a little bit of time, so I wanted to make sure that I bring it up, you know, early on. Uh, and also, uh, given the fact that that there is a two percent yearly increase based on on the base salary, uh, maybe for as we move forward to be able to provide us with uh, what is it? What is the salary at now currently? Uh, that would obviously include the, that 2% uh, from back, I think it was 2017, 
based off of the 125,000 and or the 50,000, whether it was part-time or full-time. So I have, if I could speak to that really quick, I thought that the 2% increase only applied if we were paying under the provisions within the Ed Code as it currently stands. I don't think that the 2% the yearly raise is something that happened automatically by step. Um, Mr. Trevetti, are you able to opine on that? I will have to look at that and get back to you. I can look at it while we talk here to see if um, if uh, I find that readily available in the next few minutes. Let me know. Okay. So to restate my understanding is that under if they if they accept it if the payment was set by the Ed Code, a two percent increase on non commission years is allowable. But if the if the if the salary is set by a commission such as this. The two percent is not applicable. That's my understanding. I'm 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 not wearing an attorney hat right now, um, but I, in my research, that's what I found. And I don't I don't want to misrepresent anything here. So what the charter provision says is that in the years the committee does not meet, the board of education can act to increase the salary by two percent every year. So it'd be an action that the board of education would have to take, and of course, consistent with any state laws that apply to the board of education. So. Um, I'm sure they have a number now of what they are currently being compensated, which may or may not include a 2% increase if the Board of Education has taken any such action since 2017, and um, staff will be able to get back to that number by next time around. Okay, I'm, I'm going to text someone right now just to verify their, their, their salary, and maybe we could wrap this up before we even leave. And then as for the retirement piece, um, it, it is accurate that if, if, a, if a school teacher decides to run for the for the for board seat, and then they win a board seat. They are no longer a part of Calpers or Calsters if they were classified rather than certificated. They're in Calpars, which is an alternative retirement system, um, which is um, I guess structured more like an annuity. So they do money comes out and goes into that account, but they do not get retirement credit as if like like I do, or or like a teacher does um, towards towards retirement. Does that sound familiar, Mr. Martinez? Uh, uh, yes and no, but my understanding from back then was that it was something that uh, it was up to them if they wanted to participate, and at that point it would have to come out of their own pocket based off of those 125 or whatever it is that they get paid uh, rather than having a fixed amount or, or something already structured where they would actually get a retirement. Yeah, more like deferred compensation. You know that teachers pay a part of their retirement and it's matched by the district. So the individuals do pay into the retirement. Yeah, the district, so for me and most, and, and I don't know exactly what the teacher amount is, um, but classified employees like myself, and, and, and Mr. Rabel, you may have a better understanding of this than I do, is uh, I think the district does 14% and I do 7%, or I can elect to go higher. I think it might be 8% now. That I or 14, the, it's a split between the employee and employer. And same applies to the, to the certificated staff as well. So on the posters and CalPERS side, there's a contribution from both parties, and depending on the uh, um, depending on the bargaining unit, uh, the, those percentages may vary, but uh, generally speaking, there's a compensation paid into a retirement system from both employees and employees, and, and, and district as the employer. Sure, Sella. Just a quick question. Uh, I know we'll be getting into this issue in more detail uh, down the road, but uh, Mr. McLean, where are those rules governing the retirement system set forth? Is it state law? Is it um, county? You know, I, I just wasn't sure. Uh, is it LAUSD policy or CalPERS? Um, maybe you could point point us to. I will. I'll that. look into that. I know at the very least it has to do with it's a, it's a fund set up for elected. So because they're often outside of all of these systems and by nature of their elected or elected official status, but I will get a much better answer for you. Awesome. Thank you.
Any other questions, members? Um, one more thing, because um, I really appreciate Mr. McLean being so um, helpful and, and interested in, in providing support to us. So while, while we're putting out uh, inquiries, um, it was mentioned, um, you know, the benefits, um, and maybe this will be something you're already planning on providing. But if you could share with us um, the dollar aspect of that, the financial what that represents and the trajectory and, and anything that might be helpful as we think about the total compensation package. Of course, yeah, there's actually a, I have the formula here somewhere, but um, there is a formula that we apply. So you they take the base salary and you apply the formula. And if, if everyone doesn't know, the, um, the benefits package is the medical for you and your family. It, um, did someone put it in there? So it's basically medical and dental. Um, it's, it's lovely, to be honest. Thank you. I mean, it would help to know what that represents in compensation. Thank you. I think that's a really good, good question. Any other questions, members? All right, seeing none. Um, I wrote down some of your questions, um, so we will move on to item number six for the discussion and adoption of regular committee meeting schedule and also a discussion of future agenda items. Um, so this would be an area where um, after we set up a regular schedule for this committee, um, we can, or the members can, um, pitch any questions or um, reports or any data that they would like to see at the next meeting or at future meetings, and um, staff will coordinate to provide that for you. Um, so talking about the schedule, um, this committee has 90 days from council confirmation, and that was back in January 17th, to produce a resolution resolving the compensation for the LAUSD Board of Education members. Um, so that 90 days uh, falls on Monday, April 17th. <clears throat> so we would need to complete our business um, well before then and, and then, you know, provide a resolution resolving that. Um, and I would also like to say that um, the virtual meeting um, and <clears throat> what we did in item number one for AB 361, um, I believe we have 30 days for that. Um, is that correct, Harit? Yes, that's right. So you can continue to meet virtually. Um, there's a 30-day grace period under the state law, so you can continue to meet virtually until, uh, I guess it'll be March 29th. Is that right? We'll count. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we have until March 29th to meet virtually. And, um, you know, obviously this is up to the commissioners, um, but, you know, if you'd like to skip LA traffic and coming into downtown for your meetings. Um, you know, virtual meetings are an option until the 29th. Um, and uh, so it's, it's a good thing to be thinking about your schedules. Um, obviously staff is here to accommodate. Um, and one more thing that I'd like to address is that um, we are unable to meet on three days because we have a conflict with um, this Zoom webinar it's used for a different commissions, and unfortunately, we can't run two commission meetings at the same time. So um, Monday, March 13th, um, Monday, March 20th, and the 21st, um, those are days that we will not be able to use this um, webinar. Yeah, so um, please feel free, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Mr. Vice Chair, um, if you'd like to discuss scheduling, um, and then we can confirm that. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm available. Mondays are good. Uh, I'm okay with doing it in person, as I my job is in downtown LA. If that works for the rest of the group, uh, if not, I'm okay with also doing it um, online. So, just want to make that comment. Tuesdays also work, but Mondays are better for me. Wednesdays, we tend, we have I have council meetings on second and fourth. 
Uh, and then um, the others, uh, the first, I have another Gateway Cities meeting, and Thursdays I got other board meetings. So as I said earlier, I do have my hands full with other boards that I sit on. Uh, so Monday tends to work better for me, and Tuesday is open if Mondays don't work. I know Mondays seem to work better for me because, I just as you said, I have Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And Thursday is a good day, but then I already heard uh, the vice chair say that's not a good day. So Monday is the day that I have other meetings, but that I could postpone or cancel and uh, allow myself to just be in this meeting. Mr. Rivera, does, uh, uh, does Mon do Mondays work for you? Yeah, M Mondays uh, do work well for me. Um, I will just note I, I do travel a little bit with work, so... The more that we can do virtual um, helps out, just because I'm 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 not always sure what my schedule will be. Uh, on that note, I had a question for Andrew and for the city attorney. Uh, if needed, uh, for uh, like uh, Commissioner Rivera mentioned, if he if we're meeting in person and he is out of town or traveling. Uh, Will there be an option for uh, that individual to uh, sign in? So if we do an in-person meeting um, under the Brown Act, there are very strict rules about the participation of committee members who are not present at the site of the meeting. Uh, it's very difficult to do. You'd have to be in state. You have to notice the meeting at your lo location that you're at. You have to allow public comment at the location you're at. And uh, it's a it's a very difficult set of rules to comply with. So if you can't make a physical meeting, then generally your participation is, is not possible um, for that meeting. Okay. There, there are ways to do it, but it, it, it would require specifically going through the particular location the person's at and how, how it can be worked out. So as a general matter, that's highly discouraged. So we'll, we'll, try to, we'll try to figure it out so that we can all uh, be there. Uh, Commissioner uh, Raplett? Yeah, the Monday virtual meetings work for me. Okay. Uh, what about uh, meetings in person thereafter, if need be? If, if we need to, I'll, I'll make accommodations. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Reese? Sorry for the delay. Um, Quick question, is it every Monday? I, I think right now uh, we're kind of trying to dial down on a particular day. And what normally happens, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. City Attorney and, and Andrew, uh, it's more on a need basis. So we'll probably start off with a set schedule. And as we get closer to the deadline, if need be, we'll meet maybe I don't know, twice in that last week or whatever it may be, uh, if needed. Uh, but as of right now, I don't know, Andrew, uh, what do you have it at? Yeah, um, so the schedule for this committee is, of course, determined by this committee. Whatever you decide the regular schedule should be is what it will be. So if it's meeting every week or meeting every other week, um, it's your prerogative. But I do have to say that um, the work that this committee does uh, should be completed before April 17th, um, just because that is when uh, we will need to resolve the compensation for the LA USD members. Um, and I'd like to note here, the, um, so just um, for some information, um, back in 2017, this committee met a uh, total of four times to resolve. Uh, so, you know, that's something to think about. Um, of course, you don't need to abide by the four meetings. Um, it's really up to the questions that this committee has um, and the answers that it receives in those meetings. So you may well, you know, be finished with your meeting um, in less than four or maybe even over four. It really depends. Um, and... I believe, let's see here. And back in 2017, um, I believe the 
chair of the committee then created an ad hoc um, meeting of, of this meeting. So the chair and two other members were an ad hoc committee and they, you know, went through a bulk of the business. Um, so, you know, that is also an option. So if many of the committee members cannot meet virtually or cannot meet on a Monday or a set day, um, maybe that is an avenue you uh, would like to explore um, just so that you have more meeting dates available. Um, and uh, I'd like to kick it over to Harit. Yeah, so just to provide additional context and to address your question, uh, Commissioner uh, Martinez, you can set up a general meeting schedule. Um, as Andrew mentioned, there were four total meetings last time around. But if the committee feels like it needs to meet in between those regular meetings or additionally, you can also have a special meeting um, that you can uh, call with 24 hours notice as long as it's agendized and noticed properly. So if, for example, there's extra work that, gets to be, that needs to be done and you need to meet before the next regular meeting, you can convene a, convene a special meeting on an as-needed basis. So um, I think it'd be wise to set up a, a structure for general meetings, uh, but with the understanding that if you need to meet um, in addition, you can. And if you feel like you don't have materials ready for a regular meeting that's scheduled, that also, you know, obviously can be canceled until the next meeting. So there's some flexibility there, but setting up a regular meeting schedule on um, dates that you and the public know are going to occur, um, at least as a regular matter, is, is something that we should do now. Thank you. Um, how does the, well, let me, if, if I may, go down, finish going down the list, and then I, I wanted to propose something. Um, so I think the person that I have left here is uh, Commissioner uh, Sela, uh, Sela? Sela, thank you. Sela, I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, do Mondays work? Yes, Mondays are great, and I can meet virtually or in person, whatever works best. Okay, and I believe, well, for me, as for me, Mondays work uh, in uh, person or virtually. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, the last time, obviously, everything was in person, uh, and it just worked a little bit better. We were able to get everybody there and have uh, full-blown conversations. Not that we can't hear, but uh, it was just more, um, a little bit more, more, uh, more open, I think. Um, but what I was going to suggest was if maybe we set it up for next Monday, and then after that, every other Monday, which would be every two weeks. Um, and then if we if we need to, just like the city attorney mentioned, uh, we can have uh, a special meeting. I don't know how everybody feels about that. Uh, I have Andrew. Um, so I wanted to just bring this up as well um, for Mondays. So we have the 13th and the 20th that won't work because our web ID will be utilized for a different commission. Um, and the 27th of March is actually a city holiday, so we won't be able to meet then as well. So that only leaves March 6th, uh, next Monday, for the only meeting in March. And uh, the committee will need to resolve its business before April 17th, which is also a Monday. So you'd only have April 3rd and 10th after March 6th. What is the uh, uh, committee's... Uh... Uh, Andrew, can I ask a clarifying question? So those limitations on those dates, um, that's only if we do it virtually. Is, is that right? Uh, yes. So the 13th, if you meet in person, it would uh, work. The 20th, it should work as well. Um, the 27th won't work. Right. Okay. I, I just wanted, maybe that's an option then. I, I think that's a great, great question. Uh, so if we do, again, the, the meeting for next Monday, so we can actually get into the weeds of things. This was more of an, of an introduction. And then after that, uh, maybe doing it every other week, or unless you guys want, you all want, would like to do it every, every Monday. Uh, we can actually finish before uh, uh, that April 17th date, uh, 
if needed. Uh, but it's you all let us know. So, so if I hear correctly, it sounds like we're talking about meeting the sixth and the twentieth. Those would be the next two Monday meetings. Andrew, did you say yeah. the twentieth wasn't available? Uh, the 20th would be available in person. Oh, the 20th would be available. Okay, so maybe we should schedule the 6th and the 20th right now so that since we have the time. And then look, we probably will have to schedule somewhere else another day because to be finished, uh, you have to have the resolution finished um, before the 17th. So it only allows you a few weeks, allows us a few weeks to do this. So we'll probably have to schedule another day that's not a Monday, I guess. But virtual, I think, works good. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I completely agree with uh, Ms. Uh, Woods Gray. Uh, the 6th and the 20th in person. Uh, and then maybe we can look at the 3rd, uh, the 3rd, the 10th. Or the no, we'd be, we'd have to do it by the seventeenth, the third and the tenth, uh, if need be. Mr. Chair, um, yes, sir. I, 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 are we doing this in person, or is there some that are not going to be able to do it in person? So that's why we, because if we're all going to show up in person, then maybe we can do the uh, most of the Mondays in March. Because the the problem that we have is uh, if it's going to be virtual, that's what Andrew had said. So. Understood. It, sound, it sounds like for us to be able to do it in March uh, 6th and the 20th would have to be in person. I did see Mr. Uh, Commissioner, um, who's, I saw someone say well, that. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, wanted to also point out that perhaps we can do, I don't know if the 14th of March would work virtually. Uh, otherwise, perhaps we can do in-person meetings. I, I also agree that if we can uh, tackle most of the our questions and analysis in, in March, we're probably in a, be in a, in a better shape. Um, I am. I will not be available during the first week of April, um, but um, otherwise, I'll, 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 I'll stay as flexible as possible to to be there in person or virtually. Andrew? Um, so I just wanted to reiterate that you can meet virtually on the 6th. It's the 13th um, that we can't use the web ID. But and if we were to switch to the 14th, we could go virtual? Yes, yes. You can You can go virtual any other day of the week. Um, you also don't need to create a regular schedule that only falls on one day of the week. I, I, I understand most of the members are available on Mondays, but if the committee chooses, uh, you know, they can meet any other day of the week as well. Um, we will just note that these specific dates will be the regular um, scheduled meetings for this committee. Okay, so then uh, what we have um, is the 6th, right? If we do the 6th, uh, next uh, meeting, and then we jump to the 20th, that way it's every other week, uh, and then... Do we have enough time for every other week? Uh, well, what I would suggest that we, we can jump the 13th, since it's not available virtually, uh, and go to the 20th. And maybe if uh, do also the twenty seventh, uh, Commissioner Martinez. So yes, ma'am. So the sixth would be virtual, and the twentieth would be in person. Uh, that that would be the suggestion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, that that works for me. And just personally, uh -huh. Monday uh, is just a lot easier than the rest of the week. If we could do them all virtually, as many as virtual as possible, I would appreciate. I'm, I'm sorry, folks. Um, so it looks like the 20th, I just got a notification. The 20th is free for virtual. 
Um, and uh, Mr. Chair, 27th will not work because that's a city holiday. Understood. So we have the 6th available, the 20th available. Uh, is that correct, Andrew? Yes, sir. And if okay. we want to do, if we want to do every week, uh, and I, that's up to the rest of the group, um, I'm okay with the 14th and the 28th, which is a Tuesday. So if you want to do every week, so I don't know if everybody wants to do every week. That's Tuesdays. And I know uh, Commissioner Sella said that Monday works best for her. So I don't know if that Tuesdays work for her. I I, I would I think that's a great option, but. While we're in the startup phase, maybe every other week, and then we save the every week for the, the big push at the end. Special meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Um, okay. So gathering everything back up, we have the 6th, the 20th, um, the 6th, the 20th, uh, the 3rd, and obviously the 17th. And then... Somewhere in between, if we if we feel that we're too short on time, then we can call some special meetings in between. Is that okay with everyone? Yes, and just to note, um, like Commissioner uh, Ray Blatt, I'm also not available the first week in April. Hey, Hurry, uh, quick question for you. Um, so the third, the uh, 90 day deadline is April 17th. Um, so can this committee? convene on that date or should the resolution be available on that date it can convene on that date and, and take final action on that date after its final action Understood. by the end of that day the committee's term will end and to be clear for folks um the april 3rd or any dates in april they would have to be in-person meetings um, the option for a virtual meeting ends um with uh with the end of march Okay, so do I'll throw it right back to the rest of the uh, committee. Does that work then for us to do the 6th, the 20th, and the 20th uh, virtually? Uh, and then it would be the, uh, oh, my God, uh, we might have two people then, two commissioners that wouldn't be able to on um, that first week, correct? Um. So maybe can we can we do that uh, week of the tenth? Uh, maybe put two dates on there, uh, just in case we can always cancel or, or finish off early. Is that okay with the rest of the co the committee? Yeah, I uh, yes, that'll be fine. Yes. Okay. okay, I don't see any pushback. Uh, Andrew, uh, could you kind of? Uh, write that down and, and um, let us know how that looks. Yeah, of course. So I have March 6th, Monday, virtual. I also have March 20th, Monday, virtual. And then we go into April 10th, Monday, in person. And you wanted a second meeting that week. Um, do you have a preference of a date? If we're going to have two in one week, one needs to be virtual, if we can do it. We will not be able to do any virtual meetings in April, unfortunately. May, may I suggest maybe do another virtual meeting during the week of uh, March 27th, if we can agree on a date? How does the uh, rest of the committee feel about that. I, I'm perfectly fine with that. Mr. I'm Vice sorry, Chair could you repeat committee? that? Uh, could you repeat that? Yes, yeah, so he uh, he brought up, and I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Raybaugh. Uh, no, do an additional meeting, if we're looking for additional meeting to do virtually to do it during the March of uh, March 27th, week of March 27th. So the 27th itself is not available, but um, if we can agree on a day during that week, that gives us the last opportunity to do the virtual meeting. That would be great. That would be great for me. 
So it sounds like Tuesday um, was the next favorite day. Um, so March 28th, we could do virtual if that is amenable to the committee. Commissioner Sala. Uh, yeah. I'll be out of town, um, but I, I'll make every effort to, to attend. Uh, it, it, does any other work work, uh, any other day in that week work for you, uh, Commissioner Sella? No, uh, thank you for asking. Uh, I'm actually traveling starting the next day. So the, the 28th would be the best, and I'll, I'll, I'll really try to join. Thank you. Vice Chair uh, Ali, Ali I know that you have uh, city council meetings on Tuesdays. Does that work for you? Wednesdays, Wednesdays. I'm good on the oh, Tuesday. Wednesday. Okay. Everyone else? Anyone else? Any objection? And just to yes. confirm, these will all be 6 p.m. start times. Is that what you are suggesting? I, I believe so, unless I hear any objection to that. Yes? Okay, so Andrew, I think, I think we kind of narrowed it down. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'll repeat it back for you guys. Um, we have... Monday, March 6th, virtual. Monday, March 20th, virtual. Tuesday, March 28th, virtual. And Monday, April 10th, in person, 6 p.m. City Hall. Perfect. I think, uh, I think now, quick question for the attorney. If, um, if for whatever reason we are not done by then, can we still have meetings up to the 14th? Is that correct? Yes, and schedule have, some more after? Sure, you can schedule a special meeting up to the 17th. Um, that's the last day for this committee to complete its work. Even though Andrew will not have it uh, already on, on his resolution, right? Meeting, um, that there will not be a regular meeting scheduled that day, but you can have a special meeting scheduled. Okay, great, great. I think for now, unless there's any objection, that we go with those four dates as of right now. Great. Um, I believe we'll need to take a vote on this. Okay. So I okay. will call the roll. Uh, Woods Gray? Aye. Martinez? Aye. Ray Blatt? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Ruiz? Aye. Saleh? Aye. Sella? I believe you're muted, Commissioner Sella. Aye. Okay, perfect. Seven eyes. Uh, the, the regular schedule has been adopted. Um, just to I, reiterate. I apologize. Yes. I, I, I just wanted to confirm. Did, did we need a motion and a second for that? Uh, so I have you as the mover. I guess okay. we can grab a second from Mr. Vice Chair. That's fine. I'll second it. And that's been adopted. Um, so we have the regular meeting schedule. Um, and we can move on to um, discussion of future agenda items. So any reports or data you'd like to see. Um, for your future meetings. Um, I, you know, as mentioned by the other commissioners, um, the more forthcoming you are, um, I guess now or at an earlier meeting, more information, you know, will be provided and you can um, basically come to a resolution or a conclusion um, at an earlier rate. So please feel free to ask for whatever you need and staff will try to comply. And uh, we do have uh, Mr. McKean uh, with his uh, hand up. I, I reached out about the 2% increase. There has been no 2% increase since the 2017 committee met. That still doesn't resolve the actual question whether or not they're able to, if they're taking um, a salary that's set by uh, a commission. Uh, but they, in the meantime, they have not taken a 2% increase. Um, and I think I misstated earlier the year of the committee. So if you want to go back and get the deep, deep context, June of 2017, under the city clerk file, you can find the, the prior ad hoc uh, compensation review. Understood. Thank you. So at this time, um, do we have any particular items 
anything that uh, we want the staff uh, to research to come back uh, to the commission and uh, and give us a presentation or feedback just to give you an idea uh, the last uh, time around uh, they you know the commission even wanted to figure out whether an increase was even doable or affordable, uh, whether LAUSD would be able to afford it. So they, the commission asked for a breakdown of their budget, as an example. Uh, and so we had someone from LAUSD come down and break things down. Uh, we had somebody, someone, uh, one of the requests was uh, getting um, what other elected officials from the state, state, state Senate and State Assembly and LA City Council were how much they were making and based off of their population. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of room there for, for, uh, this, this committee to ask, uh, for things. Is there anything in particular from anyone? Uh, Commissioner uh, you know, Rabel. I'm getting involved, I, I think I'm going to take a position uh, in a couple of years. Yes, Commissioner uh, Rabel. Um, I was. Um, I would be interested to to see what the uh, other large school district does. I think uh, Commissioner Sala pointed out earlier. Uh, to, uh, if we take the top five out ten uh, large school districts in the country to see what their board members are, um, how the compensation is structured, uh, whether there are any benefits that are associated with it, and uh, um, whether there is a differentiation between the part-time and full-time and in, uh, outside employment there as well. Um, the, um, uh, would probably be helpful for us to, to see what the total cost of the retirement benefit would be to the district, what the, what the um, uh, the liability for the district would be on uh, on providing additional retirement benefits per per individual, um, and um, the uh, and also uh, as you pointed out, I would be interested to see what the the large, uh, last time the committee had the access to what kind of data they considered in in evaluating and determining the salary increase at at that time. It would be helpful for us to, to see and understand the, what the logic was used at, at that time. Perfect. Do we have anyone else that would like to put another item? I see uh, Commissioner Rivera. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I would. I think that the other um, districts would be really helpful. And then, um, um, as we, you know, we've we've talked a little bit about the retirement piece. So I would be curious to um, think to look at what the retirement plans look like for for the city council and for and board of supervisors and perhaps at the state level too, assembly and senate, so that we have some comparison about what other elected officials' retirement plans uh, may or may not look like. Perfect. Uh, do we have someone else? You know, uh, uh, I think it would be good to see what the compensation is for other employees in the district. Could you elaborate a little bit more? The high and the beginning salaries for other employees who work in the district. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ms. Woodgrave, uh, can I elaborate a little bit more in maybe any particular positions? Uh, you're talking about teachers, principals, uh, or st administrative staff? I would like to see for the whole district, every, I mean, before they be classified or certificated, what um, administration, what are the salaries at the district base? I'm not familiar with them at this point. Perfect. Uh, I have uh, Mr. McLean. Uh, hi, I, I'm so I know that the um, 
the city handles some of these questions. Would you like me to also handle some of them? I, I, I don't want to do double work, but I have come, I do have some of those figures prepared, but I know, I think it now it sounds like I would like to put together. Uh, if, if, you can be so, if you can be so kind and maybe uh, work with the Alley City Department side of it and I guess figure out who would be the the designated individual to make the presentation. Can I ask right now the person on the on the line Mike, that I should Michael, this is Andrew. Um I will connect you with uh the folks from the city and um we can all collaborate to see uh you know who should be presenting what. Awesome, thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have any additional? I'll, I'll bring one up. Um, and as I mentioned uh, before, since we previously used the uh, salary numbers from the state and, uh, and uh, local uh, elected officials, can we get a breakdown of what increases those particular uh, positions received during this period of time since since 2017 to now to see what percentage or how much increase between now and then for us to consider that as the inflation factor possibly. Okay, so I'll put it out there one more time. Uh, do we have any anyone else with additional requests uh, to uh, put items on the on the agenda for presentation or, or questions? Do you guys take into consideration the cost of living increases and those kinds of things when you did it last time? Maybe we could have yes. a report on that. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, Andrew uh, and Mr. McQueen, uh, could we get uh, that for the for next meeting as well? Okay, and it seems, if without objection, uh, for us to be able to move on uh, from here, I think we 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 received quite a few items uh, for direction for next meeting. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. We do have uh, uh, Commissioner Reese uh, with her hand up. Thank you, Chair Martinez. Um, I guess I'm a little curious about, and uh, Mr. McQueen offered, uh, you know, a brief overview of uh, what the school board members um, do in terms of their duties. Um, but I, I was kind of curious how that compares to the superintendent of LAUSD. Um, I'd like to get, you know, I guess a comparison, if possible, about what responsibilities they each have and, and how they're different and how uh, they compare. Um, and I guess this kind of leads into a few of the other commissioners' questions in terms of uh, seeing how budgets compare with others. I, I, although I would like to see how they compare to other big school districts, I'm very curious to see how we also relate um, just in, in school districts that uh, have a little bit, I don't, I don't know, uh, usually the price index is a little bit different here uh, in Southern California, and so I'd, I'd like to get a comparison um, of how we relate to other districts as well um, here in our area. Sounds good. Now, and I'm so sorry, uh, Commissioner Reese, I know you briefly mentioned superintendent. Did you want a breakdown, well, I'm sorry, a comparison that included that as well? Yeah, like in terms of like what their job description is, like what, like what, what the superintendent is in charge of uh, versus what uh, school board members are in charge of and then how how they compare, how they relate, and then the difference in, in pay um, would be just a few of the things that I think we should consider. Okay. Well, on that note, Andrew, <laughs> I think you have your hands full. <laughs> yes, uh, I wrote down um, 
all of the discussion items and for the ones that where I feel like I need to follow up on. I will follow up with the commissioners on your requests and um, I'll coordinate with the city staff as well as Michael from LAUSD um, to have this prepared uh, for your next meeting. Okay, great. Uh, I don't see another item here. Is that correct, Andrew? That's correct. The desk is clear, so you can adjourn the meeting. If so at this time, I will, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move, select. Mr. At this time, uh, I have, well, I have a motion by uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Saleh and a second by uh, Jim Williams Gray. I think at this point, uh, all in favor? Aye. Oh. Aye. Aye. I kind of threw everybody off, huh? <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll have Andrea, and I think I don't think we're allowed to do it this way because we're virtual. Uh, so. Uh, Andrew. Uh, From my understanding, Rocha? the chair can yeah. adjourn the meeting. Is yeah. that right, Hurry? Yes, it can be adjourned by the chair. Um, okay. Well, that information is fine. Then that works for all. So uh, I will adjourn the meeting at 8.03. And thank you very much and good night to all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Thanks, Commissioner.